Hello, I'm Vivian McGrath from beingunbeatable.com and in this video I'm going to say me too. I've been sexually harassed at work just like so many other people who are coming forward in the me too movement. I started out my career as a um, an actress in TV soaps uh, and then I went on to become a news and current affairs reporter and I remember one particular event. I just started my first job reporting on a high profile news and current affairs show and I was put together with this older cameraman because they thought well he's experienced he can show me the ropes a little bit and there was an abuse of power in terms of uh, him being an older man, he'd been at the ABC broadcaster that, that uh, I was working at for a long, long time and was a trusted employee. And he was put to work with me, a uh, very green, fresh reporter, didn't really know what I was doing, completely winging it and making it all up as I went along. And it started off as those sort of jokes the misogynist jokes that I didn't find funny <clears throat> but I sort of laughed along with them because I just didn't know what to do I felt uncomfortable but I didn't feel I could say well that's really awful I don't I don't I'm offended by what you're joking about and and the jokes started to become very very personal and then they started to become uh comments like wondering how good I was in bed, whether I, w I was fiery or whatever. I won't even describe because it's just awful. And again, done with a laugh with all the other male colleagues that we were out shooting with. So all the blokes were laughing and wondering and, and uh, making jokes about what my sex life was like and all this. And I just felt really uncomfortable. It was awful. But I was really young and he was older and I just thought I can't make a fuss. I've got to just laugh along, play along with the boys and be like that. Um, I then had another producer, a male, <clears throat> again older male, and he was really supportive and he was really helping me and teaching me and mentoring me. And my husband and I were living in different cities at the time for me to, in order to take this job, he had to stay at his job in another city. And this guy sort of uh, swept in and mentored me and looked after me and uh, um, was very kind, really, really, really kind. And, you know, so I felt that I had this nice guy and he was supportive. So in a way that sort of counterbalanced the other guy. Anyway, what really crossed the line for me was when the cameraman started talking about his daughter and how angry he was that his daughter started locking the bathroom door and not allowing him to walk in whenever he felt like it. And I think the daughter was something like 11. Um, and he also started joking about how useful she was because she would whenever he clicked his fingers and asked for another beer, he'd make her go and get him one. And that crossed the line for me. I felt really, really, really uncomfortable. And um, I just thought, this is wrong. This is wrong. And shortly after, I was about to leave that job and move back to Sydney um, for a bigger and better job. It was like an apprentice I was doing in a regional um, city before going back to Sydney to do a bigger a role. Um, and they had a leaving party for me. And I, I smoked back then, I don't know, I haven't smoked for many, many decades, but I smoked back then and I went outside to have a cigarette. And the cameraman came out and I had a pair of long shorts on, which sound horrible, I know, but you know, back then, country road, long shorts that were sort of beige colour were quite quite nice with a chambray shirt and I had I had them on and the camera came camera came, cameraman came out and cornered me and shoved his hand up my shorts and started trying to grope me I was so shocked I was taken aback and I fought him off and I ran back in and I was shaking and um I talked to the producer who was my mentor and I, I left. 
The next day I went and reported him to the Human Resources Department and I said, this is what happened. Um, but I also wanted to report him for all the comments he said about his daughter because I said, I'm really uncomfortable about what he has confided in me and I don't feel that that is normal and I worry about his daughter. So I would like that to go on record so that if there's any future uh, thing that comes up, there is something on record. They said that they would talk to him um, and give him a warning. I don't know whether that actually ever happened because the next day I did leave. And what surprised me even more was the next day when I said goodbye to the rest of my colleagues, the lovely producer came up at the end as I was about to walk out the door and hugged me and held me so tight in a, in a manner that pressed all of my body up against his and he held me there and held me there and I couldn't get free and then I felt his erection and it was the most uncomfortable moment it was horrible he was just pulling me so hard and, and I just thought I can't believe this you know Sexual harassers come in many forms and many shapes and sizes. And, you know, this is back in a day where, where workplaces were pretty misogynist, misogynistic and there were, you know, a lot of bum slapping and all that did go back on back in my day um, when I was starting out in work. And I would have hoped that it has changed by now, but of course... You know, with all the Harvey Weinstein and all the Me Too movement, we are seeing that things have not changed a bit. And very recently, a, a, a young girl um, came to me because she knew I was writing this blog and um, uh, doing my videos, talking about different forms of abuse. And she asked my advice about, again, a high-profile man in a high-profile industry who took advantage of her uh, after she'd had a few drinks because being a little bit tipsy does not mean you're to blame for what happens to you and asked me what she could do. So I thought it'd be very, I mean, it's very, it upset me very much that this is still happening in this day and age, but clearly it is and we have to address it. So I thought it'd be worth talking through some of the things you can, you can do. Um, firstly, uh, you know, because locker room talk, as President Trump puts it, is anything but locker room talk. And as long as there are men out there uh, who believe that it's locker room talk and nothing wrong with that, well, then there is going to be continued harassment at work. Um, I know that men are harassed too, but um, the p predominantly sexual harassment is uh, men against women. But in terms of any forms of harassment, what can you do? Well, the first thing I would ask is, do you want to take it further? Because uh, it may be, you know, there's very few guidelines about what sexual harassment is. And it's really difficult and confusing because Girls are bombarded with these images in advertising and everywhere saying that they are objects to men. And men are bombarded with you can't do this and you can't do that. And they might be very, very confused about what is right and what isn't. So the first thing I'd ask is, do you want to take it further? Um, it may be that it's a level of harassment that you can just go and confront the person and talk to them about it. Say, look, I felt uncomfortable when you did this. Because it may be they're completely oblivious. They might just be stupid and not aware that they've done something that's a little bit misogynist or not, not quite right. And it might be that when you point it out to them, they say, oh my God, I didn't realise. Thank you for telling me and I will change my behaviour. So the first thing is, are you in a position where you can confront them and talk to them about it? If so, then possibly do that. You may not be. 
they might be in a position of power over you. They might be your boss, for example, and you don't feel comfortable about confronting them with it. Or it might be more extreme and you just are so traumatized you can't. So what I would do in that case is I would write a statement as soon as you can after this has happened and I would put dates, time, as much detail you can. If there's been any physical evidence, like you've been grabbed on the arm and there's bruises, just take photographs. Um, if it's worse, um, then yeah, evidence, evidence, evidence. If there's witnesses, then please go and get them and ask them to write statements for you as well with dates and times so they can collaborate what you have in your own statement. And then if it's not an extreme uh, sexual abuse that you need to decide whether you take that to the police, then if it's uh, a form at work that you can take it to an HR manager, then take that statement and any witness statements you can to them and talk to them in confidence about it. Now, it might be that you're in a small company and that's impossible because there is no HR person or the HR person is best friends with the owner or might own the company as well, co-own with the boss. Um, in that case, then there are outside places that you can go. Um, I know in the UK, in the Equality Act came in in 2010 um, and there are now advisory boards that you can go to that uh, can give you independent and confidential advice. So whatever country you're in, look to see if there are equality advisory um, boards or places that you can call. Uh, there's citizens advice bureaus that you can go to that might be able to point you in the right direction of who you can talk to. Or there are trade union representatives that you could go to and they could help you within your industry, the trade rep for your industry. So there's some of the steps that I would take. And if you are looking to join a new company, then do your research. You know, ask them, what is your policy on sexual harassment, harassment in the work? I've just realized I always say harassment, but it's actually technically harassment, isn't it? Anyway, ask them what their policies on sexual harassment are uh, in the workplace or talk to, to women or men that work there already and just ask them, what's the culture like? Do they promote women on merit? Um, do they pay equal pay? You know, do your research, ask around. It doesn't hurt to find out. So that's it. Um, there are steps that you can take. And sadly, me too. And if you are someone who is also me too and suffering sexual harassment at work, then I would consider taking the steps that I've just described. And the, uh, the final thing I would say is you don't have to report it. Uh, some people, it's a purely, the choice is yours. Some people feel that they, they're too ashamed. They don't want to, they can't. The decision is yours alone and no decision is right or wrong. But if you choose not to report it and take that formal route, then please, all I would ask is that you talk to someone, a trusted friend, a family member. Don't keep that sort of trauma inside. It's really important to talk about it because talking about it um, is a way to help you heal from it. Bottling it up inside alone will only further that feeling of shame that you should not feel because you are not to blame and you don't want to start festering negative feelings of shame.